Hey guys, Mike here. So today we're gonna look at the market in a little different way. We're gonna look at like what happens, you know, when you have a green January, dig under the hood on that one. What do we look like in February when it comes to a presidential election? We'll look at that. Also look at something else which doesn't get enough attention, but one thing that could signal a reason why this rally could continue to go to a certain level. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about with that right there. And then also uh, some pretty big bets or hedges that are coming in on the VIX as well. But when you look here, guys, just to get into it, this always talks about how a strong January kind of sets the tone, right? Which is true. I'm sure you've heard that before. And, and it's pretty accurate. There's only a few times where you look and go, oh, okay, well, that wasn't the case. But most of the time, a green January means a green overall year. That does not mean it goes straight up. That means you get your, you know, five, five percent less pullbacks and your one ten percent and that kind of stuff. So you get pullbacks throughout no matter what. But the end, end of the year ends up green. There's only a few times on here. There's one right there. That was during the dot com bubble where you had a green January uh, in, in a, a red year, of course, it was in a crash. That's when you usually see some of these that doesn't make any sense or whatever. But I think overall, I come in here, I think I'm marked like four or five. And this goes back to 1990 where it didn't jive. Like that was a, a red January and we had a really green year, right? And so, and I believe that was, that might have been 08 or something. But again, you go with the rest of them. They kind of line up to where it should be. There's another one, green January. Uh, red year right there. I believe that was 2018. That's why. And so there's usually some reasoning behind it. But and for the most part, what's funny though is when you really look underneath the hood, here you got IWM. It was actually down for the month of January. Uh, actually, more than this. This counts uh, today. So it was down about 2.5%, maybe 3 actually. Uh, RSP, equal weighted SP, ETF. Again, uh, don't count today. This is actually down as well as you can see the equal weighted rsp was actually up today if we pull this up uh, right there and you can see about 0.75 percent so it was red also okay so again what does that tell us it lets us know very quickly again the majority of the money is going into uh, these are nine stocks i have on here but i call them the mag nine now uh, because they started just roaring and then of course we went back to the 2023 playbook right buy a bunch of money going into the the big ones because they're safer to be in and the equal weight etfs and the small caps either going sideways or selling down so big difference there and that's basically what is happening uh still right now as we get earnings rolling in on the big uh mega caps right now but also you can see right here this is weekly inflows which i try to find for you guys and what's number one almost nine over nine billion actually u.s large cap etfs right that's where people are putting their money okay because that's just the safest way to go right now they got a lot of money uh they're laying off a lot of employees so they're cutting their costs and of course that's a much more safer place to be and more people are buying into them guess what that means they continue to go up or at least hold up right and when we look at february as far as, especially during an election year, this goes back to 1950, uh, for the most part, you can see the NASDAQ doesn't do too bad. I mean, it's, but it's a mixed bag, right? Up and down, you can see, I mean, you're talking about 50-50. That's, that's about as good as you're going to get on here uh, when it comes to February. Some people are picking March maybe to get a pullback. Some people are saying middle of February. I believe during seasonality, it's like the middle of February when you normally see it. And this comes from Stock Traders Almanac. Now, one big bet, and I think you're the reason why you're seeing this come in. And guys, before we continue, if you'd hit that thumbs up, I'd certainly appreciate it. It helps people find the video. And if you like the content, think about subscribing. And so you can see right here, traders scoop up 250,000 April VIX, 50 to 55 call options. I don't know if they're doing spreads or just individuals, I was telling the members, but you know, it, it makes sense because I think when you pull up seasonality, if you're looking for a pullback in the first quarter, which you know, a lot of times you get, it, it makes for a good bet because I believe these are cheap options. They're going so far out with it. And so, you know, it makes sense, whatever. Let me know uh, if you're playing that. But a lot of people just hedge. It doesn't mean it's going to play out. A lot of people just use this as a hedge as well because uh, why not? And I think the spreads are extremely cheap. At least that spread is. Now, one thing you're seeing is kind of interesting is KRE, right? Your regional banks. This is the regional bank ETL and how far they've been down just in the last couple of days. Dropping big time off the news I showed you, it was yesterday, the day before, about that one bank having losses, unexpected losses that is, and so it freaked people out, you know, they give them flashbacks or something. So that's been selling off, even though the dip keeps getting bought up uh, each day. But one thing about this is, it's got to do with the rate cuts, right? And you can see the US 20 year here and TLT, these have inverse relationships. What is the regional bank's biggest problem? They are underwater massively by hundreds of billions 
in bonds, okay? And so as yields drop, bonds go up. As, as uh, yields go up, bonds drop. This is when they got in trouble right there, when the yields just started skyrocketing. And so, again, if they hold them until um, they mature, it's no big deal. But in just case people forgot, the big deal with that is they hold them to maturity, they're fine, right? But when they were, they were starting to get runs on the banks, right? People pulling their money out, sitting in those long lines. If that happens, they were, they were being forced to sell those bonds at a loss. And so that was creating, and, they, and we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. And so that was what was freaking people out. And so that's why the Fed stepped in and said, here, give us your bonds and we'll just give you the money because we know if we hold them to maturity, they're fine, right? But it was just because people were sitting in those lines trying to get their money out they thought the banks were going to fail, just as a reminder on that. Now, and you can see the inverse relationship with the yields and like, for example, uh, KRE, right? Yields go up, right? KRE went down, yields came down, KRE started rallying. What's really funny though is look what they're doing now. They're going in the same direction. Okay. And if we kind of scroll back, you can see normally they tend to be going in the opposite direction, right? I assume it's because they hold a lot of bonds. So I'm only guess on this one. I don't really deal with a lot of regional banks. But the only time when they really went together was right here. And what happened? That's when those regional banks started failing, shutting their doors. And this is when all the, the bank runs started happening. Okay. Because people got freaked out. And I think this one in New York or something. And I think also because a lot of stuff came out about commercial properties and stuff. Because the commercial properties are just a mess. I mean, they just are, right? And so a lot of who holds a lot of these loans? It's the regional banks. That's who holds a lot of these loans. And so uh, obviously that's freaking people out. But the good thing is reading that stuff, they've extended some loans. But a lot of those really don't come due. At least the, the ball is being pushed, you know, kicked down the road till next year or the year after and stuff. So uh, I think that's just a lot of people you know, getting scared and stuff. But it, once they start doing the rate cuts, if you see bonds start going up, you should see uh, regional banks as well doing that. Now, I think maybe because they push it, it, the Fed, say, hey, well, wait a minute, we probably won't do one in March. It, it's not a coincidence you've seen regional banks start to sell off again, right? And we'll see if the dip gets bought up again on that one. Now, looking at the indexes here, you, you can plainly see, look, I always say keep this in perspective. What is the S&P in? It's just in this upward channel right here, still in a bullish formation, right? Again, hit the top, coming back down, a little V-shaped recovery, no shocker there, maybe fills the RTH gap. But again, still just in this channel, it's been setting in pretty much all of, actually going back to December, actually, when you look at this. And again, what are a lot of people targeting? Probably like 5,000. You see these round numbers. And, you know, that sounds like a lot, but... You know, even if it comes down here, that's 4,800, right? So that's going to be good support for it. But if it goes up to 5,000, that's not that far, guys. I think it's only like 2% from where we're at now. If it drops down to 4,800, it's 2.55%. That's nothing. We went down over a percent yesterday. So that's just nothing in either direction, to be honest with you. These swings we've seen. And then we go to the NASDAQ 100. What do you see? It's just sitting in a channel. It's been sitting in this channel since November, right? It went up and down, up and down. Bullish channel. There's nothing bearish about it at all right now. We even draw a trend line here because we got a couple bounces there, right? So, you know, this is another one. There's nothing bearish about this until you break down out of the channel and start setting lower lows. But again, you know, looking out on the weekly on this thing, setting here, and we'll move this line up. But, you know, the line, if it does start to sell off at some point in time in February, is going to be what? The previous all time high is going to be where you definitely do not want to break down. But when we pull up, you know, this MACD here, you can see, I want you to just take a look at this on a weekly perspective here, that you can have the MACD come up here and it just stays up here forever. You can stay overbought for a long time as well. But that MACD with that momentum, look what happened on the last rally. Just stayed up there going sideways. Everybody, you know, you had the small dips, you're gonna have those five, eight percent pullbacks right there going up. That's normal, that's liquidity grabs, and it keeps pushing up. You know, you go back to the one previous right here, when we went from 2017 up to 2019, you saw the same thing. All right, so the question is, are we going to get that again? Are we going to kind of stay up near overbought territories, the RSI, or the MACD, excuse me, just going to sit there and start going sideways, dipping 5%, 10%, you know, here or there? Yeah, absolutely. That that most likely will happen. We'll move this line up here. And the one line you just don't want to break, again, there's what you're seeing when you see these dips, right? But the, the line you don't want to break is that previous all-time high. That, that is a key, key, key level, right, to try to stay above. So I'm going to move this up because there we are. Now, the one thing that doesn't get enough love and the reason why this could continue is the NASDAQ composite. Remember, this has not hit all-time highs yet. The Dow has, the S&P has, the NASDAQ 100 has. This one has not. Holds, holds a lot more stocks. And because you don't have this huge breadth and because a lot of it's just in these you know, probably 25 stocks, really, that's why it's not at all-time highs yet. It's grinding up there, right? It's still in this bullish 
formation here moving up four and a half percent, you know, and that's going to be key. So do we get up there and maybe get a sell off, right? Is that a double top for you? That's what we got to find out and stuff. Again, this one right here, just in a beautiful channel. That's all it's doing. Look at that. Make some touch points here, there, and boom, there it is. Still moving up, right? And it's tech, he heavily tech. And not all tech, but heavily tech. And so I don't know what the mag seven makeup of the NASDAQ composite. I'm not really sure on this one. On the NASDAQ 100, it's like 35% or whatever. Uh, now, when you look at Tesla, because I like to cover this one, again, this one right here, what's it in on a short term basis in the last couple of days? Setting this down trending channel right here. Loves just to sit there and play off the prior days highs, prior days lows. Again, it's just in a range, right? It's staying below that weekly level of 193.30. So staying where the option market wants it to stay at this point in time. And again, like we talked about, how many days? Usually, what, five to 10 days and stuff is what we had talked about, five to 11 days, uh, somewhere in there. And so far, we're setting it one, two, three, four. This is the sixth day, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm counting that correctly. Yeah, six days. So, you know, we're six days in and look where we're at. That's where we're at. So you got that low right there around 179-ish. And so, and a high right now, like 195. So sitting in that range, you know, see if we just stay there, right? So it figures out where it wants to go. Now, as far as earnings, you'll have a lot of oil companies. And then, of course, Abby and some others at the bottom, some healthcare stocks and stuff. Nothing big is going to shift the market in any way, shape, or form. Maybe the, the oil market. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of data coming out, right? Prior to the uh, morning bell, you have average hourly earnings month over month, year over year. You're going to have the non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, which is what everybody wants to look at. And that's going to be, they expect 3.8%. So maybe not a big change again. And so remember, the stronger that stays, the less likely they are to do a rate cut in March now. And of course, then you have factory orders and then Michigan consumer sentiment. And, you know, the only thing that should affect market in the morning are going to be the unemployment rate and earnings and things like that to kind of set the tone. But again, remember, it's all liquidity grabs up, down. Yesterday was a huge sell off. Today they ran it up. Uh, I think it was right after, right before, right when lunch started at 12 o'clock is when it actually started to go up. Uh, I saw that also in front of the computer when that happened. But, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. And it, it, think about the data. Remember, they only use the data or the news to move the market where they want to move it. Okay. I think you've seen where you go. That doesn't make any sense whether the stock is going up. That's what we're talking about. Okay. And so, again, the, you, yesterday's sell off make any sense compared to the day's run up. Like, what's changing in 24 hours? You know what I'm saying? Uh, nothing that's just all liquidity gaps trying to fill orders to keep moving uh, the stock market up at this moment okay so just keep that in mind i mean i just did a member's video about the 1995 rate hiking cycle and you'd be really surprised at the similarities between the two it really is kind of striking i didn't, didn't even think about it i found an article and figured i'd go over that with them and it's, it's pretty striking so i suggest you google that or look it up on a chart but pretty interesting to see so uh, anyway hope you guys got some out of it remember just keep everything in context take the wider view out of where we're going and stuff because it's gonna it's gonna be bumpy all right just keep that in mind every time you have a red day yesterday you go ooh, and then here we are with the green day again so again don't don't try to sweat the small stuff just keep the bigger picture uh, in view so anyway hit that like and subscribe button if you got anything out of it really appreciate it guys and i'll see you tomorrow to wrap up the week and put your questions at the bottom if you got any because I'm going to start Saturday's video as well. All right. See you later.